Welcome to part two of the Atlas Search segment. In the first video, we covered what Atlas Search is from a high level. And in this video, I'm going to show you what search looks like from a, the perspective of a uh, end user in a basic web application, uh, what the operation looks like under the hood, and then how to build and refine your very own search index in Atlas. So we can see here on this uh, web app that I have called Mongo RX. Uh, this is basically a repository of different health studies and, and health documents. Uh, so in the search bar, uh, the first thing I'm going to showcase is autocomplete, which much as it sounds, will begin to serve up uh, matching results based on the inputs as I type them. Uh, so if I have health, you know, we can see that all of the, the top five results that are being served up have the word health in them. Uh, so then now the, that's autocomplete, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the second function that we're going to showcase is fuzzy search. So with this one, really, this is typo tolerance. So I struck out the A in health, and we can see there that the results that were returned were still uh, pertinent to what I was actually looking for. Uh, now again, you know, this, this uh, is probably something you've seen in Google searches where uh, if you input a typo, it'll, it'll correct and say, hey, did you mean X, Y, Z? Uh, so let's try one more. We'll go for cardiovascular, and again, I will leave out the A. And we can see, however, that the accurate results are returned. So, you know, all of this is being underpinned by a Atlas cluster. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look uh, into what one of these operations look like. So this is going to be autocomplete specifically. Um, and uh, in this Jupyter Notebook here, we can see that we have uh, an aggregation. So we have a, our search, uh, which is targeting the autocomplete index. Uh, we're focusing on the name field. And we can see that we have a projection, which is basically saying, hey, the only thing that I want back is the name. You know, strike out the ID uh, and anything else that is not defined here. Uh, and then finally, we have our limit to five. Now in the green text below, we can see our results. We have our five results. And uh, the first word I'm going to search for is Montreal. So as I'm typing this, we can see those results change based on our inputs until everything that it is giving us now is Montreal. Uh, once again, let's try uh, sunrise, All right? So we have sunny. And then as soon as I put in the R, we're getting anything that says sunrise or we can do sunset. And there you go. So this is kind of a, a peek at what it looks like under the hood. Uh, now let's go into actually building your own search index in Atlas. So uh, I have a pre-existing cluster in here uh, that does not have any uh, search indexes. Uh, I do have some data in here. I just loaded the sample data set that comes with Atlas. So if you wanted to deploy a test cluster and just uh, play with some sample data, uh, you can do so by clicking these three ellipses and choosing load sample data set. So now in our uh, deployments dashboard, uh, I'm just gonna come down to our target cluster and choose create a search index. And now in this wizard, uh, we're just going to leave most things as default, right? So we're just gonna build an autocomplete index, uh, but for the most part, we're gonna leave all defaults. So the visual editor is fine. Index name default is fine. Now our target, uh, for this example, I'm gonna use the movies collection under the sample Mplex database, uh, but really, you know, you, you can use any collection. Um, so now we'll see that we have some default values for our index analyzers um, and the mappings. You know, I won't go into too much depth in this video on what analyzers are, uh, but really, you know, they give you more targeted methods um, or more targeted templates for defining what uh, or how your search index is going to be built. So for example, you know, some of them will strike out or omit filler words, very common filler words like a, and, the, um, and then others will give us uh, language um, analyzers. So basically if we're, you know, indexing against uh, different languages. So for autocomplete, we're going to come down to field mappings we're going to add a field and I'm going to choose title uh, because this is the path, right? We are 
we are auto-completing off of title uh, in the documents in our movie collection. Now I want to add data type, come in and choose auto-complete, and then we will leave all of these other settings to default. Uh, so we're using edge gram and we're kind of defining the lower and upper bounds for minimum and maximum grams or, you know, number of characters. So two to 15. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and then create search index. So now this will uh, take a little bit of time to complete. Really depends on how much data uh, is in the collection that needs to be indexed. Um, in this example, you know, we don't really have uh, too much in that movie collection. So now there are several different ways that you could test this out. You could hop into the Mongo shell, connect to this cluster, um, and input your, your search operation through there. Uh, but I want this to be a little bit more visual and, uh, and I kind of want to go through step-by-step step the, ag uh, the aggregation. So we're going to come to collections. Uh, we're going to go back down to where we have this index built in our movies collection. And then now we can see here that we have uh, our aggregation um, panel here. So what this is going to let us do is build out this aggregation operation uh, step by step. Um, so first we are going to call search. All right. And then under here we are going to input. I have it copied. So let's just input this. Now this is telling us, hey, our target um, is the autocomplete index that we just built, uh, which might still be building based on this. Um, and then that we are uh, querying the letters G, E, R, and uh, again, our path is title. So we are looking for results based on G, E, R uh, on the title field. So I'll give that a minute to build out. Um, and then here we are going to do a limit. So basically defining how many results we want back. We'll just say 10. All right, great. So now we can see that we have our search function, ger, and then anything in the title of these should have GER. So Gerdy, Germany, or zero, great. And then we can see here that our limit has now sorted things down to uh, only 10 results. Now, last stage, let's go ahead and do a projection because we have a lot of information here and we do not want to serve back all of this data to our customers before uh, or our end users before they make a selection. Uh, so let me just go ahead and do project. And similar to what we saw in that Jupyter Notebook, um, I am going to omit the ID and say, hey, you know, really all we want is the title back. All right, and there we go. So we can see that we have all of these search results have GER in them. Uh, and then let's, uh, let's just change this just to see. Let me do TIM to see what our results are. Okay, there we go. So now a time to live, a time to love, the land before time. Uh, and so, you know, there are different things that you can do to make uh, or to adjust the scoring and the ranking of your search results. You can weight uh, different keywords and things like that. So, you know, you can really fine tune these search indexes um, for your, uh, your application or your use case. So now uh, that's pretty much it. The last thing I wanna show you is uh, if we wanted to, we could come back um, and we can look at our search index and see you know, how much data it is taking up. Uh, remember, you know, a consideration is that while there is no additional cost uh, to enabling or building search indexes directly, you, know, you don't need to toggle anything on or pay extra in Atlas, um, you, you still need to consider that uh, these search indexes will be uh, taking up space in memory and, and acting much as, as other indexes in your database do. Um, and then we can see uh, if we wanted to come in here, we could edit uh, and we can make adjustments, right? We could add another field mapping uh, we could adjust some of these uh, analyzers and then we can kind of push these changes.
Um, but there you go, there you have it. That is uh, how easy it is to get up and running with Search and Atlas. Uh, no need to rely on, on your operations team to provision um, or, or deploy servers or uh, licenses, etc. You know, it's just quick and easy to get up and running. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.